Hey family, Kenyon Gray. Have you ever heard people say the heart wants what the heart wants? Usually it's spoken with ambiguity as if covering for some past mistake they might have made or even covering for future mistakes they anticipate making. Scripturally speaking, they're not wrong. Ecclesiastes 11.9 says, To those who are young, be happy and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart. Do whatever your eyes see. But remember, you must give an account to God for everything you do. Yet Jeremiah 17, 9 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Wow, these two verses seem to contradict each other, but I found that both contain truths. God wants you to live a joyous and abundant life, but he wants you to be responsible in the choices you make. Careful not to be fooled or deceived and go after destructive desires. Proverbs 16, 9, the heart of man plans his ways, but the Lord establishes his steps. In other words, everything you do, all your wants, hopes, dreams, romantic interest, job ambitions, the pursuit of a talent. You are expected to plan out your strategy and pursue it in a way that is pleasing to God. But it's God who establishes the pathway for you to get there. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says it this way. He has made everything beautiful and appropriate in its time. He has also planned a divine purpose in the human heart, a mysterious longing which nothing can satisfy except God. Yet man cannot comprehend God's overall plan from beginning to end. God has a plan from the moment you were born to the moment you die. He has placed a divine purpose in your heart, and at the right time, it will call for you, signal for you to chase after it, produce such a passion inside of you that nothing will satisfy you but to pursue it. Only God can temper your desire to achieve it, and only God can get you there. But it takes time to develop, and that's where it becomes grueling. This is where it gets twisted, because imperfect man has a duality of flesh and spirit. Heaven on one shoulder, hell on the other. Proverbs 14, 29 and 30. Patience leads to abundant understanding, but impatience leads to stupid mistakes. We've all heard Katy Perry tell the story of how she started out a gospel singer, but sold her soul to the devil for fame. A lot of talented people say that. That choice was fueled by impatience. And reality is, they can't sell their soul at all. It's not theirs. Ezekiel 18.4 says, All souls are mine, thus saith the Lord. The soul belongs to God, and the folks saying this lie are deceived and are in sin, and we all fall to sin. But 1 Peter 2.24 says, Jesus bore our sins on the cross so that we might die to sin and live in righteousness, meaning Jesus paid the price for our sins. The forgiveness of Christ cancels out any contract with the devil. All Katy Perry has to do is repent and get forgiveness for believing that stupid lie or making that stupid mistake. That's it. Here's the roadmap. 2 Peter 1, 5-7. With all diligence, add to your faith or your Christian walk, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, brotherly kindness, and charity. In other words, as you pursue your divine purpose, love God to wild abandon. Let Jesus dwell in your heart. Set a high moral standard for yourself while you're developing a closer walk with Christ. Moderate your indulgences with restraint. Accept the delays and work your gift. Strive to imitate Christ. Love others as you love yourself and help the needy. Being rich and famous doesn't make you happy. God is not Santa Claus. His gifts are lifelong dedications. And if you follow the roadmap, here's the promise. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete and perfect it until the day you see Jesus. Meaning that divine purpose that God placed in your heart, he's going to perfect and complete it. I've made a lot of mistakes in my life due to impatience and following after my own path. God's always got me back on track, convicting me in such a way I could do nothing but seek his forgiveness. God was completing and perfecting my divine purpose. It's his lifelong commitment. Romans 11:29 tells us that God's gifts are irrevocable meaning you can use it for God or you can use it for the enemy, it's your gift. 
Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but God gives eternal life through Jesus Christ. Using your gift selfishly and for the enemy brings about the wages of sin. Using your gift for God brings about eternal life. Yes, doing it God's way is gonna take some time, but the payoff is I've gotten to experience every dream I've wanted to pursue. I've gotten to follow the ways of my heart and do whatever I set my eyes on. I just had to die to my will and take up God's will for my life. That's what Jesus did when he went to the cross. Luke 22:42 says, Father, take this cup from me, but not my will, thy will be done. Jesus provides the perfect example. Everyone must suffer the cross to get the glory. Hit me back, I'll hit you back. Subscribe on YouTube, friend me on Facebook and Instagram, follow me on TikTok. From brokenness to recovery, music that mends the heart. I'm Kenyon Gray.